Hey, what is up guys, it's Arniak and welcome back. A couple of weeks ago, I uploaded this video, where I showed you how to use the new stroke tools, Taper and Wave in After Effects. Later on, some people asked me how I did the background animation, because I did not cover that in that video. And as you guys know, this channel is all about helping you to improve your filmmaking and animation skills. So make sure you're subscribed and turn on the notification to step by step up your filmmaking game with every video. So, without any further ado, let's hop right in. Roll the intro. Taking a look at the scenery, we can determine that there are several layers that we have to create. The closest one being the moon. Then there are a couple of shiny levels representing the moonlight. And then there is the background with all the twinkling shiny stars. Well, and of course the rocket, but as I said, that's already covered in another video. Okay, now that we have a rough plan of what we want to achieve, let's get cracking, shall we? We open up a new composition and make it square for future use on Instagram. Make the background color black, but maybe with a slight bluish tone. Now let's kick things off by creating our moon. Choose the ellipse tool by clicking and holding up here to access the drop down and pick it. Or use the keyboard shortcut Shift Q to switch between the options until you land on the ellipse tool. As fill color, let's choose a light gray. Hold down Shift while dragging to create a perfect circle and align it to the center of our composition. If you want to, you can add some more random details to enhance your illustration. Hit R on your keyboard to bring up the rotation specs. Alt or Option click the stopwatch icon to open up the expression window and type time times 30 to make it slowly rotate over time. And that's the moon done. Next up, the moonlight or the shine or whatever you want to call it. For this one, let's create a new solid layer. Hit Ctrl or Command Y, name it something like moonlight, choose a nice bright blue and click OK. Make sure to have the ellipse tool still selected and highlight the solid layer. Dragging out shape now will create a mask on this layer, which is exactly what we want. But as you can see, that is really not what we're looking for, right? We need it to fade out. Simply hit F on your keyboard to bring up the mask's feathering and boost up the value. Now that already looks way better, doesn't it? To give all of this a little more depth, you could think about creating another level of shine with a slightly different hue and make it bigger or smaller. And I think we're looking fairly good already. Next up is the background. For this one, we're getting creative with a fractal noise effect. Once again, create a new solid layer with controller command Y. The color doesn't matter at all this time, but don't forget to name it accordingly, because we always want to label our layers. Move the new layer all the way to the bottom of your composition and search for Fractal Noise. If you have not yet gotten into the ins and outs of the Fractal Noise effect, I highly recommend to do so. There are an insane number of ways to use this tool for your animations. So if you want a dedicated video, let me know in the comment section below. I'm always interested to hear which content you guys would like to see. Now let's take a look at how to set up the settings to create this twinkling sky. Apply Fractal Noise and first off, change Fractal Type from Basic to Turbulent Smooth and Noise Type to Soft Linear. Now simply increase Contrast way up, decrease Brightness considerably and finally make the evolution shift over time by Alt or Option clicking the stopwatch and as an expression type Time times, I don't know, 100 or something around that. Okay, I'd say the animation itself is done. But we're not stopping there. Let's start stylizing our look a little more. First off, I want to add a glow effect to the background. Because, well, stars glow, right? So, as you might have guessed, I'm using my new favorite Deep Glow by Plugin Everything. Link is in the description. Apply to your sky background and play around with the numbers and settings until satisfied. Then move one layer further to the front, which is our moonshine. While I don't dislike the looks of it, I still want to add more interest and custom look than just a plain and simple fade. So here's a nice trick to make gradients look more textured. Simply go to blending modes. 
If you cannot see those, click down here or hit F4 on your keyboard to toggle between the modes. And change the blending mode from normal to dissolve. Now you will get this really interesting texture. This is a trick I picked up from Ben Marriott and I really love the aesthetics of it. However, right off the bat I think this looks a little too rough and densely packed. Because of how dissolve works, lowering the layer opacity will result in a looser bunch. But it always will show the sharp edge dots or squares even. But there are a couple of ways to soften everything, just a little. One method I like to use to address the edginess is a subtle turbulent displace. So search for turbulent displace and apply it to the layer. All you gotta do is decrease the amount and play around with the size. It is a minimal change, but it will diffuse some of the edges. But the method I prefer over that one is roughen edges. I talked about this one in a previous video where I used it to make a sticky liquid animation which you can check out in the annotation right now, if you want to find out more about it. Again, we will set this one up in a quite subtle way. Just make the dissolve smoother ever so slightly. Increasing the border value will alter the border shape completely, all the way until you get those almost spike-like shapes, which can also result in interesting designs, say a hot glowing sun for example. But that's not what we're going for with this one, so decrease the value again. With edge sharpness, you then can make the dots either more compressed and dense by increasing, or distribute them a little by decreasing the value. And finally, the scale specs can alter the shape in yet another way. So you can see that roughen edges really comes with a bunch of ways to alter the outcome. If you still feel like there are too many dots and spots, you can simply decrease the masked feathering. And last but not least, let's add the same technique to our moon. However, we do not want the texture to cover the whole thing. Instead, we want to add depth by giving it a shaded area. Simply duplicate the moon layer with Ctrl-Command command D and place a mask similar to this one. Set masking from add to subtract, increase feathering, change the blending mode to dissolve and use the same procedure as before. Add a few effects and play around with the different options until you find your style. Don't forget to disable the rotation or expression on this one, otherwise the shape will constantly move around. And now, last but not least, parent the dissolved shine layers to the moon, so they rotate together with it, because without any movement you will not see the shift in the texture. And there you have it guys! As often with After Effects, it is a question of how you combine the tools and techniques you already know to create something completely new and different. I hope you could grab some new techniques and ideas for your upcoming projects. Drop your questions, if you have any, in the comment section down below and I will get back to you. If you enjoyed this video, and I hope you did, <laughs> don't forget to smash that like button. It really helps me to figure out what kind of content you guys would want to see more of. Also, subscribe if you aren't already and ring that bell to be notified about future videos. Check out this video to see where the animation we did today came from in the first place. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers!